Hi, Professor Bob Young back at you here, and in this video we're going to discuss circles, specifically center radius form and general form for the equations of our friends the circles. Now by definition, a circle is a set of all points in a plane that lie a given distance from a given point. The given distance is the radius of the circle, and the given point is its center. So a circle with center HK and radius R has the equation X minus H quantity squared plus Y minus K quantity squared equals R squared, which is the center radius form of the equation of the circle. Now a circle with center 0, 0 has the equation on the bottom there, X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. So you can see that if we let the center be h and k, and I'll put that in in red here, if we put in 0 for h, so if we say x minus 0 squared, and 0 for k, y minus 0 squared, that x minus 0 squared is just x squared plus y squared is r squared. All right, so here's some examples. It says, find the center radius form of a circle with a center at negative 3, 4, with a radius of 6. So we're going to go ahead and label the center HK, and they've done that here, but I'll just do it right under here. So I always tell students to label the center HK and the radius R. So notice below here that they let H be um, negative 3 and, and put that in pretty blue, and K be 4 in red, and they plugged it in here. Now, notice when you write this equation here, watch your signs. When you put in negative 3 for H, you get X minus negative 3 squared plus Y is plus K is 4, Y minus 4 squared equals 6 squared. So definitely watch your signs here. So you will get this final equation of x plus 3 squared plus y minus 4 squared equals 36. And this is called, ladies and gentlemen, center radius form for a circle. And we can tell lots by this as well as we continue here. Another example, find the center radius form of a circle with center 0, 0 and a radius of 3. So notice we'll just go ahead again, label the center HK, the radius R of, as 3. And notice if we were to write this whole thing out, X minus H quantity squared plus Y minus K quantity squared equals R squared. Now I tell students whenever you're dealing with a new formula, and it may have been a while since you used it or if you've never used it before, write it out a lot of times so you get comfortable with it. And notice plugging in 0 for H and K gives us this real basic form down here, and plugging 3 in for R gives us this final equation of the circle X squared plus Y squared equals 9. Another example, Young likes to give you all as many examples as possible so you get the feel of these things here. Graph this circle, x plus 3 quantity squared plus y minus 4 quantity squared equals 1. So notice here that if you write this out, x minus h quantity squared, oh, write that formula again, y minus k, you'll get good at it like I'm good at it, quantity squared equals r squared. The H number is negative 3, and the K number is positive 4. Now, I've got a little trick I tell students, and I'll go back up top here, and I'll go with a different color. I like to just take the opposite of these numbers as the center, as a general rule. So notice if you take the opposite down here, you'll very seldom, if ever, miss the center. And the center is the most important part when you grab a circle. If you miss it, the rest of it's it's over. And of course, the radius is 1. Now, on this one, you can take r squared and set it equal to 1 over here, remembering last chapter, and take the square root of both sides. So r would be the plus 4 minus the square root of 1, which is 1. But since we're dealing with circles, we only care about the positive answer. I don't know if I would want a circle with a negative answer. So let's go ahead and graph this in the next 
section here. So I'm going to take negative 3, 4 as the center. And I'm going to plot that first. Now, which quadrant is that in? Hopefully you remember over here in the second, negative 3, 4. And then with a radius of 1, here's how you graph a circle. Once you plot the center, you just, here's what I do. I go 1 to the right, 1 up, 1 to the left and one down. So once you know the center and the radius, it's very easy to graph a circle. And then we'll just go ahead and connect the dots and make our little circle. A little lumpy, <laughs> but not bad. All right, another example. Graph this circle, x squared plus y squared equals 9. Notice there is no HK numbers after X and Y here, so the center is very nicely 0, 0. And again, the radius, this is R squared in the formula, so to get R, the radius, you can just take R squared, set it equal to that number, square root both sides, R is 3. Now notice how the graphic shows that you could put the radius anywhere on the circle. I mean, they just took it from the center to any point on the circle, which is correct. Now, if I was teaching y'all to graph, which I am, I would start my center right here at 0, 0, the HK number, and then I would tell y'all to go right 3, up 3, left 3, and down 3 in order to make that pretty circle. So... Try that when you do them. Now, on to more fun stuff here. Now, there is a formula here, the second formula we're going to discuss. It is called the general form for the equation of a circle. Now, this sometimes scares students. You've got x squared plus y squared plus cx plus dy plus e equals 0 for some real number c, d, and e um, can have a graph that's a circle, a point, or is non-existent. So we're going to look at all of these here in a second. Now, first, let me just give you a circle here and see if you all have got things. I'm going to use the old center radius form above here. I'm going to put x plus 1 quantity squared plus y minus 3 quantity squared equals 5 squared. All right? Well, let's, let's not make it 5 squared. Let's make it, well, I'll just make it. 25. Let's get rid of that square there. How's that? That looks more like center radius form. Now, the center on this one, let's just see if y'all remember. What would y'all say it is? I'll give you a second to think about it. Using Young's trick, I hope y'all said negative 1, positive 3, changing those signs. And the radius, which I kind of gave away, is the square root of 25, 5 which would have been the 5 squared. Now, let's change this into general form. Now, all you have to do to do this is to FOIL these parentheses here, multiply them together, squaring it. So remember, if you take x plus 1 times x plus 1, you're going to get x squared plus 2x plus 1. If you square y minus 3, you're going to get plus y squared minus 6y plus 9 equals 25. So it's very easy to go from the center radius form to general form. Now, looking at general form down here, we're just going to rearrange some things here. So we're just going to put the x squared first, and if you want to, we can underline all these. The y squared second. Okay, so let's go to red here. Got this one. Got this one. It's just a matter of rearranging them here. Um, Cx would be the x term, would be plus 2x, the y term, minus 6y, so let's go ahead and underline those. I like to underline these big, long things and make sure I don't miss anything. Now, the number e here on the end could cause problems, so let's go a different color with this. We've got 9 and 1 would give us 10 on the left side equals 25, so to get it equal to 0, we would have to subtract 25 from both sides. So this E number in general form here would be minus 15 equals 0. So very easy to go from center radius to general form. Now notice in the center radius form, they've got the H, the X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals M. 
there's three possibilities based on this M number. Now, if M is greater than zero, then R squared equals M, and the graph of the equation is a circle, and we've been talking about these examples before, with a radius the square root of M. Okay? If M equals zero, you don't have a circle at all in case two. The graph of the equation is simply the center, that single point, the center, HK. If it's equal to zero, you don't even have a circle. So on the second thing here, we may want to put <laughs> and if M is less than zero, if, if the radius is negative, then you don't have a graph at all. You have something that's not even a graph. It's non-existent. So this one may even get a larger, I don't know. <laughs> so young, you're crazy. Now, there's only one thing better than going from center radius form to general form, and that's back again, all right? So in this example, we're going to go ahead and take this um, circle here, and we are going to reverse the process by completing the square, if you remember that from previous lessons. So when, remember the completing the square lessons, the blankety blanks are back. So I'm going to put plus blank plus blank here, and remember, plus blank, plus blank here. And we'll go on to the next slide here. So notice, remember, when you complete the square, you're going to take half of this middle term, half of negative 6 is negative 3, square it, and that is the number that completes the square, 9. So notice what we're doing on these to go from general to standard form, we're getting the X's with the X's, the Y's with the Y's, and then moving all the numbers to the other side. All right? And we'll do some more examples on this. So if you don't get this first one, then we'll, we'll do a few more. You know me. Um, the second one, take half of 10 is 5, square it, and here is your second blankety-blank number. So now we can factor these creatures. And remember, we did this before. We'll get X, X, minus, minus. But, but, 3, 3. The second one you would get y, y, plus, plus, but, but, and you would say 5, 5. And remember, it's usually that number you take half of that it comes out anyway. Remember our completing the square lessons from the past. So we end up with this nice form. Now we can tell them the center and the radius. So the center, taking the opposite signs, 3, negative 5. And the radius would be the square root of 9, which is 3. Now, notice it says on the bottom, since 9 is greater than 0, we have a circle. Now, had this number here, let's say we did all this, come out to be 0, then we would have had just that point, 3, negative 5. Had it been a negative, we wouldn't have had anything. So that's what that other graphic was saying. Now, let's try one more here. Now, notice this one has twos in front of the x square and the y square. So we're going ahead here, and we're going to get the x's with the x's, but we're going to factor out a 2. Because we can't complete the square, remember, unless that number in front of x squared is a 1. And similarly, we're going to get the y's with the y's, factoring out a 2 as well. Because we have to have that 1 in front of the y squared. Now, this is like the worst completing the square problem you have here, because I'm going to go ahead here. We're going to take half of negative 3, which is negative 3 halves. Now, if you're not sure how to take half of something, just take negative 3 up here, and to take half of it, multiply by a half. And then square that, and that gives you 9 fourths here in the first blank. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, we can't just add 9 fourths to the right side because we factored this 2 out here. This 2 is impacting things out here. And notice they put it in pretty blue so you can see it. I really like the way the graphic looks here. And you'll get 2 times 9 fourths. And on this other parentheses, half of 5 multiplying it by a half would be 5 halves squared. So if you didn't get completing the square the first time, you'll get it now. You get 25 fourths on the second blank. But again, you've got to impact that, too, so be careful here. Now we can go ahead and 
factor this into um, x minus 3 halves squared, but there's the 2 out front, plus y plus 5 halves squared, but there's the 2 out front, equals 18. So if you took 1 plus 2 times 9 fourths plus 2 times 25 fourths, this right side will come out very nicely, 18. So in order to get it in center radius form, we have to divide everything by 2. We can't have these numbers in front of the parentheses, but it looks like they set us up for a very nice one here. So there it is. So what is the center and the radius? Think about that a second in this bottom part. And I will go to the next graphic. I hope you got it. The center is 3 halves, negative 5 halves, and the radius is 3. So you can hear my little puppy Lucky barking in the background here. He's looking out the window. So you never know what you're going to get in these young videos. <laughs> All right, now let's look at this. It says determine whether a graph is a point or non-existent. So what we have to do, again, is get this in center radius form. So we're going to go ahead and get the x's with the x's and the y's with the y's and set up the blankety blanks here. So notice when we do that, we're, we don't have any numbers in front of the x square and y squares in this one. So rearranging, we're going to take half of 10, which is 5, square it, and that gives us 25, which we're going to put on both sides. So again, if you're going to go from general form to center radius form, you want to take this number, move it over, and they did that by subtracting it from both sides up top here. Arrange your x's with your x's and your y's with your y's, and then go ahead and complete the square, putting your blankety blanks. All right, the second y parentheses, take half of negative 4, square it, you get negative 2 squared is positive 4. That's your second blankety blank. Now, notice on this one, ladies and gentlemen, when we factor, we get x plus 5 quantity squared plus y minus 2 quantity squared equals a negative you know what that means, a big, hmm. it's not a circle, it's not even a point, it is non-existent. And the total explanation here is says, since negative 4 is less than 0, there are no ordered pairs that satisfy the equation. So I hope you like circles. We will get back to an application here in a little bit where you can actually use these in real life and are used. So Bob Young signing off.